Facebook, Apple. Two mega corporations that exist in the world we live in. Let's get to know these companies. One's known for their software, one's known for their hardware. One has almost 3 billion users, the other closer to one. But they do have something in common. They collect data. Yes, they want your data. But before we talk about their privacy policy or terms and conditions, let's take a quick look on how Facebook and Apple started. Facebook. Facebook was founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg and his fellow roommates at Harvard University, which were these people. At the time, it was called FaceMash. It was built in order to connect Harvard students with one another. This was his interview in 2004. It's an online directory that connects people through universities and colleges through their social networks there. You sign on, you make a profile about yourself by answering some questions entering some information such as your concentration or major at school, um, contact information about phone numbers, instant messaging screen names, anything you want to tell. It proved to be a popular website because just within 24 hours of launch, it gathered around 1,200 students. And within a month, about half of Harvard have signed up for FaceMash. Harvard didn't have a Facebook, so that's the gap that we were trying to fill, and now we're at 100,000 people, so who knows where we're going next. Over time, FaceMash expanded, and it became Facebook in 2005. And in 2006, Facebook opened to everyone in the world to sign up. As of now, Facebook is a very popular social media site with close to 3 billion users. Throughout the years, Facebook has always been the king of social media. Alright, moving on to Apple. They were found much, much earlier than Facebook in 1976. It was by Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, and Ronald Wayne. Their vision at the time was to change people's perspective on how they view computers. So on April 1st, 1976, two Steves and a Ronald went to the market with their first ever desktop computer called the Apple One. Over the following years, they released many other products such as phones, tablets, and computers. As of now, they're the first company to be valued at $3 trillion. All right, moving on from Apple's and Facebook's history, let's talk about why it's currently such a big deal. To start off, because Facebook's a software company, they are usually under fire for their data collecting habits. Apple, on the other hand, is a hardware company, so people aren't too critical about them. Even since 2010, Apple's stance on privacy has always been clear. We've always had a very different view of privacy than some of our colleagues in the Valley. We take privacy extremely seriously. Privacy means people know what they're signing up for. In plain English, and repeatedly, that's what it means. I, I, I'm an optimist, I believe people are smart, and some people want to share more data than other people do. Ask them, ask them every time. Make them tell you to stop asking them if they get tired of your asking them. Let them know precisely what you're gonna do with their data. So why are Facebook and Apple fighting over privacy? It all started on the 16th of September, 2020 when Apple released iOS 14. So what's different? Doesn't Apple already release iOS updates every year? I'm pleased to introduce iOS 10. To 11. iOS 12. It's iOS 13. Our new release is iOS 14. Well, you're not wrong. But this time round, Apple released a lot of privacy updates. And I mean a lot. They released Website Privacy Report, Location Services Privacy, App Store Privacy, More App Store Privacy, Dictation Privacy, Translate App Privacy, and many, many more. But the biggest one of all, the App Privacy Function. 
It allowed users to see what data is being collected from them by various apps. For example, if they installed the messaging app Telegram, users will know that Telegram collects data such as your name, your phone number, contact list, and user ID, which are pretty much expected. Shockingly, a messaging app like Facebook Messenger not only collect those types of data, but also collect four to five times more types of data. A few months later, Apple cracked down on even more privacy. On April the 26th, 2021, Apple released iOS 14.5. iOS 14.5 introduced App Tracking Transparency, or ATT for short. Yes. Apple's privacy policy just got even more aggressive. So what is app tracking transparency? Let's have Craig Federighi explain it. App tracking transparency gives users the choice of whether they want to be tracked across apps and websites. It also affects something called the IDFA, which is an identifier that iOS has had for many years. Yes, IDFA, or Identifier for Advertisers. Every single iPhone has this unique string of numbers. What does it do? So let's say you want to buy a table. So you go to Amazon and search for a table. And now you open another app, let's say Instagram, an advertisement of a table might appear. These personalized advertisements show up because these two applications share data with one another using your IDFA. So what app tracking transparency does is that this data is not automatically shared. Instead, there'll be a prompt where if you want to share, you have to click allow. If you don't allow, then your IDFA will not be shared to any applications. And it worked. Many people opt out. But of course, Facebook didn't like that. Mark Zuckerberg warning that Apple's new operating system will hurt small businesses' ability to reach consumers, saying that iOS 14 will force developers to ask permission before tracking users will cut Facebook's ad revenue because Facebook uses that info to sell targeted ads. He's asking you to think about the poor companies that'll suffer if he can't track you. Facebook said Apple's move will harm their small business advertisers. All we want to do is really just service our customers better. So if someone loves hamburgers and they're looking for something that is just awesome, you know, to make your hamburgers taste better, I would like to show my ad to you. And this update takes that away from small businesses like mine. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg was really angry. This is what he said during his earnings call. Mark Zuckerberg said, I, I do want to highlight that we increasingly see Apple um, as one of our biggest competitors. He pointed out products like iMessage competes with Facebook's messaging business, which includes WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. Apple has every incentive to use their dominant platform position to interfere with how our apps and other apps work, uh, which they regularly do. I mean, Facebook also took out a full-page ad on the Wall Street Journal and other publications complaining about Apple's move. Aaron Paul, a performance Facebook marketer, described that his company, Carousel, moved from spending millions of dollars each day on Facebook to about only a few hundred thousand dollars. Because before the iOS changes, Facebook generated 80% of the traffic Carousel sent to its product pages. Now it only accounts for 20%. So it looks like it is true. It is harming businesses. Because now, as a business, you may not be able to reach your targeted customers anymore. Fortunately, after Apple heard about all of this, they agreed to roll back their iOS updates to help Facebook. Who am I kidding? Of course not. Apple released iOS 15 with even more privacy updates. At the end of the day, both Facebook and Apple are mega corporations trying to get as much money as they can. Who knows where this will lead us in the future? Will data collection be much stricter or more open? How can Facebook help its customers against Apple? These iOS updates are just the start of what's to come. So if you want to keep updated and like these types of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Internetopia. Thank you for watching.